steam plant using a Castle Steam Boiler Part 8, fitting the parts to the baseboard. This shot shows the engine just sat on the baseboard. I didn't make the baseboard by the way, it was made by the customer. And very well made it is too. It's so well made, in fact, it's difficult to tell that these are mahogany planks. Underneath the planking is a sheet of birch plywood. Very good stuff to use because it doesn't warp and it's very strong. This part of the job is vitally important. I need to make sure that I mount the engine exactly in the right place on the baseboard. This is the method I normally use, masking tape. I position the engine on the baseboard and carefully measure how far it is from each end and from the front. And when I'm happy that it's in the right place, I apply the masking tape. Here is the approximate general layout of the rest of the components on the board. It's very important that nothing on the board overlaps the edges, because the owner is going to put a glass case over it. But already I can see a problem with this. This gas pipe adapter sticks out past the edge of the baseboard. I quite enjoy problem solving and this wasn't a massive problem. I removed the gas pipe adapter complete with the jets and turned them round. And now it looks like this, the inlet pipe points in the opposite direction. And when the glass case is finally fitted over the steam plant, the gas pipe will be out of the way. Time now to mount the engine complete with its plinth onto this baseboard. With the engine in the correct position on the baseboard, I repeated the measuring process. Because if this is wrong, then there is a major problem. I also measured the thickness of the wood that the plinth is made from. And thankfully, this mahogany is 5 eighths of an inch thick. Now I carefully need to make some marks on the baseboard, 5 sixteenths of an inch, from the inside edge of the masking tape. Once I'd checked and double checked, it was time to drill the holes. I'm using my small Bosch electric drill for this. And I'm being very careful that the drill does not slip and scratch the baseboard. This job is quite nerve wracking. If I get it wrong, how do I explain to the customer, I'm sorry, can you please make another baseboard? But thankfully, measuring twice and drilling once, all of the holes were in exactly the right place. What I'm doing here is not what you think. The drill is fitted with a screwdriver bit, but I'm not actually screwing the engine to the base at this point. I'm using the screw to mark a position on the mahogany base of the engine, after which I will drill a pilot hole, because the last thing I want to happen is for the screw to split the mahogany plinth. I carried out this procedure on the first three screws, so I now have marks in the base of the engine, and although I didn't show it on the video, I lifted up the engine to have a look underneath to make sure that these screw holes were exactly in the centre of the mahogany that the plinth is made from. In this clip I'm drilling the pilot holes. I've changed the screwdriver bit for a small drill to make a pilot hole up into the mahogany. After which I refit the screwdriver bit and here I'm screwing it to the baseboard for real. Once the first three holes had wood screws in them, I turned the whole thing over to drill three more pilot holes into the rear of the engine's plinth. The entire engine is just held by three screws at this stage but that's plenty, because the engine isn't heavy enough to shear off the three screws. It's important though to make sure that you have more than one screw holding the engine to the baseboard. Using one in the centre would be no good because the engine could swing about and I could end up drilling the holes in it in the wrong place. This part of the clip shows me fixing the engine plinth permanently to the baseboard. I really don't think this is going anywhere with six wood screws to hold it down onto the board. Sitting the engine back on the bench, it's now time to remove the masking tape, which annoyingly tore in a couple of places, but that was easy to fix. Now it's time to position the rest of the components on the baseboard to see how they're going to look. In my opinion, it is important to make sure that the boiler and the condenser and the plinth of the engine are in alignment down one edge. With all the parts in the position that I want them to be in, I'm using a screwdriver to mark the position of the feet of the boiler where I'm going to drill some holes to bolt it to the baseboard. 
The holes in the feet of the boiler are designed to use M5 or 2BA bolts, but as I have some M5 Allen caphead bolts, which are stainless steel, I'm going to use those. So here I'm enlarging the holes that I previously drilled using a 3 16 of an inch diameter drill bit, which is clearance size for 2BA. This drill bit is a 5.2mm drill bit and is clearance size for the diameter of a 5mm bolt. The bolts are miles too long as you can see here. And once again it's a very simple fix. I mark them with a felt tip pen then take all of them over to the bandsaw and chop them to the right size. Then I clean them up on the belt sander so they fit the nuts perfectly. With a stainless steel washer fitted to the allen bolts underneath the baseboard I'm now permanently mounting the boiler to the baseboard. And I'm using some domed nuts which look very good. Very similar to the domed nuts on the end of the boiler. When I was doing this job I had to pull the baseboard out from the bench. So I was very careful at this point. This clip shows me mounting the steel block that will hold the hand pump. I mark the position of it using my special long felt tip marker pen. The next thing to do was to drill pilot holes. I only really drilled the pilot holes though through the mahogany planking. The wood screws will penetrate the birch plywood with no problem at all. Once I'd done that, I screwed the block in place. This block's going to need removing, obviously, I'm going to paint it. Also, I'm going to remove the studs, because it's going to be quite difficult to fit two 6BA nuts on the inside edge of the pump. Instead, I will use some 6BA screw bolts, or machine screws, whatever you want to call them. This has bothered me from the beginning. The pressure gauge is far too small. I'm changing it for a larger one, so that I'll be able to see what the pressure is once the boiler's in steam. In the outside part of the workshop, the paint is currently drying on the condenser, and the paint I'm using is Hammerite Smooth Dark Green. And the reason for selecting this colour paint is because of this. It's the same colour as the metalwork on the engine. And here I'm touching in some of the damage to the paintwork using a small brush. This clip shows the general arrangement of the engine and the boiler. I position the hand pump where it is so that when it's in use there's no chance of hitting the handrail whilst pumping water into the boiler. Once the paint on the condenser has fully dried and hardened, I will fit that in place and I will also remove the block underneath the pump and paint that the same colour green. But for now that's it, I can't go any further until the paint's dried, so I'd just like to say as always, stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.